You have that on the screen. Oh, my people, enter into the holy land which Allah gave to you. It's your land. It belongs to you. But the New York Times will never tell you that. That the Quran says that the holy land belongs to the Jews. Why would the New York Times not put that on their front page? Why? Answer? Because the Quran goes on to say that there is a condition. The land is given to you conditionally. And if you violate the condition, you're going to be out. The condition is righteous conduct. And oppression is not righteous conduct. Driving people out of their homes is not righteous conduct. Making them refugees in Lebanon and in Jordan is not righteous conduct. Destroying their homes is not righteous conduct. Destroying their masajid is not righteous conduct. Building walls around Gaza is not righteous conduct. Starving a people is not righteous conduct. And every time they violated the condition of righteousness, Allah threw them out. But guess what the Torah says? <laughs> the Torah says that the land was given to them unconditionally. This is your land. Whether you eat pork or you eat beef, it's still yours. Whether you worship the Lord or you worship gold, it's still yours. The verse of the Torah is uh, I have it in my book uh, uh, The Religion of Abraham and it's also in this book Jerusalem in the Quran It is not because of righteousness, says the Torah, that your Lord God has given you this good land to inherit it. It is not because of righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people, indicating righteousness is not a condition of the grant of the land. The Quran says righteousness is a condition of the grant of the land. The Torah says righteousness is not a condition of the grant of the land. Every time you commit facade in the land, Allah throws you out. So which one is correct? <laughs> they themselves admit it's because of our evil conduct and our violation of the covenant with Allah that we were thrown out of the land. They themselves say. The last time they did it, however, was when they boasted of how they killed him. And again Allah threw them out of the holy land. And this time he cut them up into bits and pieces and scattered them all over the world. وَقَطَعَنَاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُمَمْ But having done that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left a door of mercy open to them. Number 16. Yeah, that's it. We just had it. There is still a possibility of mercy for you. Asa rabbukum ayyarhamakum. It is still possible that your Lord can have mercy on you. And you can save yourself from the doom that awaits those who live the way Pharaoh lived and who will die the way Pharaoh died. Asa rabbukum ayyarhamakum. Number 17. This is a long passage. We don't have the time to do anything but to go down.
to verse number 50, 157. Number 157. The slide number 17. Right, we've got it. Here is the last door. The last door open to you. If you walk through this door, you can earn Allah's mercy. This is the last age. The last prophet has arrived. He is not a Jew. He is Gentile. If you believe in him, and if you follow him, the Nabi al-Ummi, Ummi, in the literal sense, is the one who is unlettered. But the Jew does not understand Ummi as that. The Jew understands Ummi to be someone who is not a Jew who is not a Jew, therefore Gentile. And heaven is reserved for us. Heaven is reserved for us. We are the elite of mankind. We are the chosen people. And so prophets can only come from our ranks, not from these Arabs. <laughs> but he's going to be Ummi, not a Jew. If you follow him and you believe in him and you honor him and respect him and assist him, then Allah will have mercy on you. I'm sorry we can't spend more time on this because time is closing down on us. They rejected him. And they rejected the Quran. And they're now conspiring to destroy Islam. This is what Allah was waiting for. It was the second Shaban in Medina. And it is in the second Shaban in Medina that the evidence became clear that they rejected it. And so Allah shows, shuts the door to mercy. How does he do it? He shuts the door to mercy to something called Naskh. I said Mansukh is not an Arab fellow with a stop with a store in KL. An ayah which is cancelled or abrogated is called Mansukh. In Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 106, Allah says, Ma nansakh. Min ayatin aw nunsiha, na'ti bi khayri minha aw mithliha. We do not cancel or we do not abrogate any ayah, nor do we cause it to be forgotten, but that we replace it with that which is better or that which is similar. That which is better, that which is similar, not that which is different. That which is better, that which is similar. I gave you examples, the change in Qibla. I gave you an example, the change in the law of fasting. I gave you an example, the change in the law of punishment for zina. Hmm? And so now Allah closes the door on Banu Israel. Tilka ummatun qad khalat. Close the door of mercy to them as an ummah. Because they believe we're not going to be judged individually will be judged as a community. And now, since they missed the bus, and the door is closed, number 18, Allah makes an announcement. وَإِسْتَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ وَإِسْتَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ Allah has announced 
since the door of mercy is now closed, since Akhiru Zaman has already commenced with the last prophet, that Allah is now going to raise against them those who will inflict upon them until the last day the worst possible punishment. And my commentary is that this verse release, refers to the release in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, of Dajjal, which we're going to deal with in the next session, and of Gog and Magog, who will survive until the end of the last age and who will now inflict upon Banu Israel the worst possible punishment. The closing of the door the closing of the door and the change of the Qibla is number 19. Surah Al-Baqarah 144, 145, 146, 147. And we don't have the time to devote to the analysis of this passage because time is now running out. The change of the Qibla brought into being a new Ummah. Prior to the change of the Qibla, we and the Jews belong to one Ummah, following one Sharia, with one Qibla. Prior to the change in the Qibla, we and the Jews belong to one Ummah following one Sharia and with one Qibla. Now it's different. We have a new Qibla and a new Ummah is born. And this Ummah would comprise of only those who turn now in this direction. This is to separate those who follow, who follow you, O Muhammad from those who arrogantly and insolently and stubbornly continue to recognize Jerusalem as the spiritual capital of the world. A new Ummah is born with a new Qibla and Allah sends down a new Sharia which incorporates part of the old Sharia but also with modifications in the new Sharia. The last age will not end without this new Sharia being triumphant and this new Qibla prevailing in the world over those who reject it. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samir alim wa tub alayna ya mulana innaka anta tawab rahim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahmin amin.
and the next <coughs> few minutes, the pieces on uh, of paper on your table uh, note down two questions which we will collect before you go for lunch. If you do not have two questions, you cannot go for lunch. <laughs> please do. So please start, and uh, we'd like to hear some noise in this session. Thank you.